institution and i want you to 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 tell me now that uh, we put uh, this learning institution for example university a we put it into a case study and then we want to know how the quality control happens what is the process of the quality control right from the beginning that is the input we said it has three steps we have the input we have the processing stage and we have the output stage so so humphrey take us through now in the in in an, in an example of a learning institution how can quality control be be done a uh, quality control and inspection be done in such a kind of a scenario come okay. up okay yes in an institution like this like university mm -hmm. quality control can be done in like first first the the institution has to has to how to know the performance of the, the students. So that is now the input stage. We are starting with the input stage. Now tell us, this is the input stage. This is what is done. And then we go to the processing stage. Say now this is the processing stage. This is what we expect to be done. And then the output, what is expected to be done. Okay, so in the input stage, This happens whereby, this happens whereby the, the institutions, institutions has to have all the all the, all the admission all numbers the and, and admission, admission information of the students mm -hmm. whereby they have, whereby to, they have to register with their system. Mm -hmm. So at the, at the the output stages, stages whereby, whereby we start start with the with the product product inspections so like in ZTEC, this is yeah, this is to ensure that to ensure that with the students students get their services their fully. services fully. Yeah. Yeah. good a good trial yeah. who can come up again and assist him to from where he has left Peter, yeah. yeah, you were not there in class last last week, but I've explained. I've given a, a, a brief explanation. Can you can you help him from where he has left? <laughs> you know that is a, a good example of a question that can come to to an, uh, can come in your examination. So the the, exam, the neck examinations uh, you keep in mind that neck examinations are normally application they normally give application questions so you should not expect direct questions that now say the processes of of quality control you will be given a question that you will, you will need to think so we are putting now scenarios real real life scenarios where now we want to see if you you guys really understand because these things we are learning we are going to apply them in the the field. You guys are going to apply them in the field. I told you uh, in the future, you're going to be contractors. You're going to, to own companies. You're going to be managers uh, uh, in, in companies. So these things are very important to you because they are the things that will bring profit or the feedback uh, in the company. So uh, I'm still on that question. I want people to...
Ini proses ada. Ini muka kelas musim ini. Hasan Hasan nama anda. Kau kuna nyesha katoka kidogo. Ati? Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. My my machine just went off. I had forgotten to plug it to power, but it's now okay. So now, can somebody now uh, pick from where I had left and then explain that? I want a proper explanation for that scenario. Somebody who can chip in and explain before I explain. Peter, you were talking. Ama uliko mesha onge. Yes. Or someone can help you. Salad. Salad is off. People have already muted. Okay. Edgar. Can you say something on that scenario? Come on, Edgar. Jaribu. Yes. Try. Yeah, like at the input process, mm -hmm. the university ensure students from a regular unit, from a different school fees. Then mm -hmm. at the processing, mm -hmm. the university confirm have these mm -hmm. students of paid school attending classes, have they been given such? Therefore, I attend class. We want to, we want to, we want to knowledge enough. Then at output stage, this is the the learner from the field. Give up the knowledge that he gained for the institution. Okay, that is a good trial. Now let me uh, explain what exactly needs to happen in such a scenario. You know, that is a real life scenario that needs to have quality control. So at the, uh, before you even discuss any question of that kind, the, the thing that you need to ask yourself, the, the, the question that needs to linger into your mind is, ask yourself one thing, uh, what is the product that I need in this case? What is my product? Before you know your product, you cannot know how to control the quality. So let us mute our mics. So that I explain that. Yes. Uh, uh, now, in this uh, in this scenario where we are talking about a learning institution, our product is the skills that we have imparted on the students. The, the skills that the, the students have gained is the product that we need. We need uh, the, the students to be marketable. We need the students to, to move out there and be self-dependent to be able to, de to depend their, themselves, be innovators, and even create employment. So they, they have to go through a process. And this process they have to go through has to be, uh, we have to make sure that uh, uh, as quality control, meaning quality has to be made sure that it is maintained. So at the input stage, now the process, we have said the process normally has three stages. That is the input, the processing, and the output stage. At the input stage, what, does the university or this learning institution need to do? What does it need to do so that to make sure that quality is maintained to this particular skill, to this particular individual who has already, who is going to be imparted skills on? So the initial, the initial stage is the intake. We are looking for raw materials. What are some of the raw materials that we need for the process to start? The raw material is the student. So this student, uh, before we take in this student, we have to look at, we, we have to put some restrictions. You cannot just take any other student, but specific students for specific courses. Now, for instance, take, for example, a student going to join electrical engineering. There are, there, there are things called cluster points or marks or grades that have to be achieved. There are some basic requirements and cutoff points that are needed for this person to be able to access that course. So that is one of the measures, that is one of the things or the standards that
the the university also has to ensure that this uh, the, the, the resources the resources apart from now the student who is going to be sharpened the resources that are being used are also uh, up to standard. They make sure that the lecturers that come in that will be serving these students can, uh, meet the qualities that are set. We normally have the standards, the, the, the ISO standards, which give the minimum qualifications or the standards of the, the, of what the peop, the lecturers need to have or the teacher needs to have. So this person has to be qualified. For you to be able to get a good product, you have to also get the, the, the person who is going to work on the product to be skilled, meaning uh, in all terms, knowledge-wise, even uh, uh, character-wise, and all those things. So so there al there's also a process of selection. The, the institution has to make sure that the selection process of the raw materials, the taking in of the raw materials is very okay. And it goes through the correct programs. Now it has already come out from the input. Now we are done with the input. The raw materials is already selected. We have we, we have washed the materials. We have made sure that they, they can now enter into our machines. So what is the next uh, thing that needs to happen? We go to the next step of the process of quality control. So the next step of the process of quality control is now making sure that during the process of impacting these skills to the learner, they are getting the best. They are getting the best that they can get and they are not wasting time and we are even the packaging the branding so many other things happen like for example we have the branding we have to advertise our university to continue having the process going on we have to make sure that the learning takes place lectures lectures are attended the student has to attend 75 percent to be able to do the exams exams are done correctly and up to time irregularity is not allowed everybody has all the ethics needed for the process to be successful. Now we are done with the process. We have already processed. We have baked our cake. The student is ready as the skills now want to get out. Now that is the output. The output is the real product. The product has already been made. Now it is it, it is being released in the market. So how are we controlling the quality control at the market? We are going now to get the feedback from the market and make sure that uh, the product that, that we release there gets a good feedback. So wherever we are taking our students, we follow them there. We even follow and hear what happened to them there. How are they? Uh, how is the environment talking about our students? How is the market receiving our students? So that is the output. We make sure that the output fits well in the market. So when the output fits well in the market, it will make sure that the raw materials that will come in and the process that will come will be continuous because of that. So I've uh, guys understood what I've explained. Yeah. You've gotten that. Yes. Yes. So now let us go to today's uh, uh, lesson. I will start by con completing the inspection process. So before we go to procurement, the topic we are going to talk about today is procurement. And before we can start off the procurement, I want us to finish with the inspection process, the, the receiving process that, that is summarized. Now we have a flowchart there. Uh, the flowchart there is, is explaining how a depart the departments are maintaining the inspection and quality of a product that is being processed. So this phase of purchasing cycle involves the physical uh, uh, transmission of purpose of purchase requirements. This should be a fairly routine, although not necessarily the most efficient part of purchasing cycle. So some organizations transmit orders electronically, whereas others send materials releases through the email or by, via fax. So receive, receiving process summarized. So the process begins with the vendor and ends with the delivery of the product. Uh -huh. Now, follow the arrows of the sequence to see now the receiving process. Now we are almost done with the inspection. Now we want to see the, in, in, in the, the, the benefits. So you can see the process. Now, for example, we see the receiving department you receive, and then the product goes through there, that it comes from the vendor product, then the receiving department, and then they, they do the packaging. And then this is now the, the almost the last stage of the processing, the last stage of the processing so that it, the output can go to the market. So we go to the benefits of inspection and accreditation. 
one of the benefits of inspection or quality control is to minimize the risk. Throughout the world today, business and businesses and customers seek assurance that the product, materials, or services they produce or purchase meet their expectations or conform to specific requirements. This often means that the items are inspected to determine their characteristics against a standard or a specification. For the manufacturer or supplier, choosing a technically competent inspection body minimizes the risk of producing or supplying a faulty product. So uh, if you want to minimize the risk of supplying a product that does not meet the quality, inspection has to be done. So instead of waiting a product to reach the market and then it comes back, we have to make sure that the product, the inspection is done to minimize the, any risk of the product being rejected from the market. Another benefit of inspection is to avoid expensive or they will avoid expensive reinspection. You can imagine you've taken uh, uh, canters of cartons of milk or of any product that, that you are taking to the market. You've already done the transportation costs. The, the, they have reached the supermarkets. They have reached the wholesale shops. They are now under distribution. Now, your product has already reached the market and then it gets rejected. So what do you do? You have to take it back. Now, like, for example, what happened to the maize flour? You remember the companies that were told to withdraw their maize from the shelves? These are the, 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 the when the cabs realized that some of these maize, uh, maize flowers package uh, con contained some aflatoxin. So, you know, that is very expensive. If, for instance, these people had done inspection properly in the, in the processing stage before they could release it to the market, then they could not undergo the expensive reinspection. You can imagine you have to take your products back. That is another double cost of transportation. Then you have to hire more people because already the product is produced in mass or in bulk. You have to take it back for inspection and sometimes you went destroy. So it is a very expensive process. So inspection products and materials can be expensive and time consuming. So if the quality of the inspection is poor, the consequences can be expensive as well as the need for reinspection. So if a product has failed to meet specifications or consumer expectations, it may lead to product recalls. It means the product can be recalled like the way I've said, some maize were being recalled from the market. Now, the next, uh, uh, rework, uh, litigation, and reimbursement. Now, like uh, uh, people maybe who had bought those, those, those packets of flour can say that I want back my money because the product did not meet my demands. So reinspection is required. If reinspection is required, it is invariably damaging to the reputation of the supplier or the ma manufacturer too. So choosing a technically competent inspection body minimizes the chance of additional inspection being required. So when we do an ins quality inspection for our products, we are avoiding or we are barring the uh, we are avoiding the step of doing reinspection. Number one, it might uh, uh, spoil the reputation of the supplier or even the company. So sometimes companies that, oh, whose maize flowers were recalled. A customer may never want to buy it again because the trust to the product normally goes away. So we need to be very careful when we are dealing with the market. And any time that you find yourself in any chance, maybe you are a manager somewhere, you even have your company, you are doing a processing of certain products. You make sure that the quality and inspection is the very important process and a step that should not be overlooked. So enhance your customer customer's confidence. So when you do quality inspection and you are sure that your product is very okay, then you enhance your customer's confidence. The customer normally trusts that this product is always okay. So confidence in our product is enhanced if clients know if it has been thoroughly evaluated by, a, by, an, conf, by an independent, competent inspection body. Now, this is particularly so if a product supplier can demonstrate to their customer that the inspection body itself has been evaluated by a third party. Increasingly, customers are relying on independent inspection evidence rather than simply accepting a supplier's word that the product is fit for purpose. So that one is self-explanatory at that point. So then another point is reducing the cost and improve acceptance of goods we improve the cost under, under 
reduce the cost and improve acceptance of goods internationally. How do we do this? Now through the Kenas inspection, uh, the, the, uh, the inspection accreditation, technically competent accredited inspection bodies receive international recognition, which allows their inspection reports to be more readily accepted in their in other economies. So this uh, this recognition helps reduce costs for manufacturers and exporters by reducing or eliminating the need of additional inspection in the importing economy. So key documents used in inspection. Number one, we have the material packaging slip. Um, a material packaging slip, which is a supplier, which the supplier provides details, uh, details the contents of the shipment, that is of the goods that are being supplied. Then it contains the description of the quantity of the items in the shipment. It also refers to the specific purchase order and materials release number of tracking and the auditing and the auditing purposes. So a packaging slip is a critical document when receiving materials at a buyer's facility. So receiving clerk uses this packaging slip to compare that the supplier packaging slip uh, uh, quantity against the actual physical receipt quantity. So this is, these are normally called the delivery notes. The, 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 the notes that normally come. When the delivery notes has come, the, 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 the receiver or the person receiving has to accept that I received the actual uh, the actual things that are noted in the slip. So another thing is the billing the uh, bill of bill of lading. Now transportation carriers use a bill of lading to record quantity of goods delivered to a facility. For example, the bill of lading may state that ABC uh, carrier delivered three boxes to a buyer to a certain in, on a certain date. So this prevents the purchaser from stating a week later that is received only two boxes. So the billing lading detail only the number of boxes and containers delivered. So the detailing and actual contents of each container in the supplier's responsibility, that information appears on the packing slip. So these are some of the documents that are accompanied when inspection has already been done. So we have another document, which is the receiving, we have the receiving discrepancy report. So the rec receiving discrepancy report normally comes in when maybe the, 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 the quantity of the materials or the quality of the materials being uh, supplied or received does not match or does not rhyme what is written to have been delivered. Like now, for example, if you buy your product from from like now, especially these online marketing flat platforms, these online platforms that they sell things like electronics, all other stuff. We have so many uh, organizations these days that sell their products online. So assume you've ordered your product and then you've received your product. Then you receive a product that you didn't order or receive a less quantity of what you ordered. So the receiving discrepancy report normally needs to have and we normally have where you sign so this is signing is you are accepting that whatever i ordered or the quantity or even the quality of what i ordered or that was to be supplied to me is up to standard or matches the standard so that is the the purpose of the receiving discrepancy discrepancy report so we have another one which is the invoice set, set invoice settlement and payment so once the item or service is delivered delivered the buying firm will issue an authorization for payment to the supplier. So payment is then made through the organization's account payable department. This is increasingly being accomplished through electronic means. So suppliers are more often being paid through electronic funds, that is transfer, that is the ETF, electronic funds transfer, which is an automatic transfer of payment from the buyer's bank account to the supplier's bank account. More and more organizations are moving to integrated system, which all purchases, orders, receipts, and payments are made electronically. Documents used uh, for issuing in a, a inventory stock. So the, these documents, we will look at them later when we'll be talking about purchasing. So up to that point, unmute your mic so that we finish 
on inspection and quality and all that I've added today before we can start now on purchasing. I want to hear from you what we have had. Yes, somebody to speak. <clears throat> Kasheru, you have yeah, not but, spoken today. Oh, Peter, you want to speak, okay? Yeah, but today we'll talk about the benefit of inspections. Yes. Uh, where we, whereby we started with minimizing the risks. Mm -hmm. This is where this is where the this is where the product before it is being sent to the receiver, the mm -hmm. the the one who is selling or giving out must inspect so that they can minimize the risk. Yes. Which, uh, so, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. You are, you are minimizing the risk, meaning you are minimizing the risk of getting your products to come back instead yes. of sell, selling them. Good. Somebody else to say something? The word that comes of hate insurance. Yes. To avoid the expense of reinsuring. Uh, is it reinsuring or re inspection? It is reinspection. So to avoid the risk of reinspection, reinspection you, you will be doing reinspection if you didn't inspect well in the first place. So another point. Enhancing your your customer's confidence. Yes, in ensuring enhancing the customers confidence so for example uh what which company normal uh, can do you have confidence on buying things for electrical installation you normally have companies and suppliers and people who make who manufacture electrical insulation equipments like now for example we have the sockets the bulbs the cables so which company is normally reputable and normally has a name in selling best product philips philips, philips. another one what about yeah. Powermax? Powermax, yeah. Uh -huh. What about East African cables? Haga. Yes? Yeah. Haga. Haga. Haga, yes. Yeah, Haga. Those are some of the companies. They sell, the, sometimes, you know, companies get too much confidence on customers and they start selling the names. So they become very expensive in their products. So uh, when you are a supplier or you are manufacturing a product, uh, make sure that uh, you don't get uh, more confidence and start selling there, you are selling the name of, in, instead of now selling your product, you put the prices very high because you think that even if I put the prices very high, the customer will still buy already. So uh, if you don't have, uh, do we have any question on that part? We, have, we are done now with quality control and inspection. Salah, did you get any questions from the past papers? I will see later. Oh, you've not gotten them yet. Yeah. Okay. Now I want us to move to the next uh, subtopic. When you look at the course outline, I said we start with quality control, and then the next thing will be moving to procurement. Then we will go to purchasing, and then we will go to tendering, and then see if we can come back to what shall have remained. So today, again, I want us to talk about procurement. So before I say anything, um, I have even given you a slide there that I was not supposed to give you before you talk. Now, somebody give me some, uh, procurement is a common name for people. Pro, uh, pro, what is to procure? What is procurement? I want people to give me some, some ideas of procurement. When you hear about procurement, what comes to your mind? Anyone can talk? There's somebody who keeping a record or a storekeeper. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Salad, Salad is saying that uh, somebody doing procurement is a storekeeper, somebody who keeps records. Is that true? Peter? Uh, procurement, I think that mm -hmm. uh, this, this, this is a document which uh, does the, make the prices of the things that one has purchased. Mm, document that Something keeps like the that. records of what somebody has purchased. So you guys never did business in, in high school. How many did business studies? 
Umefanya agrikata. Wewe unafanya agrikata? Eh. Wengine walifanya nini? Geography. CR. CR. Wengine walifanya CR. Anyway, it's so it's also important, si ndio? Yeah. So, yeah. I want us to start with the now procurement. Let's ask ourselves, what is procurement? That is the first question. Procurement is the act of obtaining goods and services. Procurement is not a person and it is not a document. Like people were saying, somebody told me that procurement is a person who does this or procurement is a document. Procurement is not a document. Procurement is not a person, but procurement is a process. So procurement is the act or the process of obtaining goods or services, typically for business purposes. That one is an enough definition of procurement. The act or that process of buying goods and services for business purposes is called <laughs> procurement. For example, I have a shop. Um, I, I want somebody to, keep, to be supplying me with uh, bread every morning so that I sell. So buying those bread so that I can sell is now called procurement. I have a, 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 a college or an institution I want uh, Wi-Fi uh, distribution to my, or I have a cyber. I need uh, Safaricom to be supplying me with bundles or some data connection. So the moment I pay for those services that I need, then that is procurement. It is all about buying goods, purchasing or obtaining goods or services so that they can help one in continuing the business. So procurement is most commonly associated with businesses because companies need to solicit services or purchase goods, usually on a relatively large scale. If you have a company, you will need to buy these goods in large scale, meaning you cannot buy one loaf of bread and then a customer buys, and then you go and buy another one and then a customer buys, or you cannot buy like a, a, I have a cyber, I'm, I'm doing photocopy work. I cannot say I'm going to buy uh, 10 pieces of printing papers and then I print, I finish, then I get no, you buy things in bulk so that you can even get this process. So because we need to buy these things in bulk, we need to procure these things in bulk, we call it procurement because uh, in most cases, the services are not even paid immediately. We we, we buy, I sell, I even reach the middle, we, we agree on the terms of payments. Terms of payments are not mandatorily that they have to be immediately. So I go to the next uh, read there. Procurement generally refers to the final act of purchasing, but it can also include the procurement process overally, which can be critically important for companies, leading up to their final purchasing decision. Companies can be on both sides of the procurement process as buyers or sellers, though here are mainly uh, here we mainly focus on the side of soliciting the soliciting company. The soliciting com company is the buying company. So how does the procurement work? We need to understand how the procurement works before we can go to any other thing in procurement. So this is how it works. Procurement and procurement processes can require a substantial, a substantial portion of a company's resources to manage. Like now, but procurement budgets typically provide managers with a specific, a specific value they can spend to procure the goods or services they need. The process of procurement is often, is often a key part of company strategy because the ability to purchase certain materials or services can determine their operations will be profitable. So in many cases, procurement processes will be Will, will be dedicated to company standards, often centralized or by controls from the accounts, payable division or accounting. So procurement process includes the preparation and the process of, of a demand as well as the end receipt and approval of payment. Uh, so comprehensively, it, it can involve purchase planning, standard specification, determination, supplier research, selection, financing, price negotiation, and inventory control. So such as such, many large companies may require support from a few different areas of the company for successful procurement. 
So uh, we have people called chief Pro procurement uh, officers who normally assist companies to go through the procurement process. So we have some companies may even choose to hire a chief procurement officer to lead this effort. A chief procurement officer can oversee the establishment of standard registration and efficient payments and serve on procurement teams. So making procurement decisions when there are multiple competitive bids. Overall procurement costs will be integrated into a financial accounting for a business as procurement involves acquiring goods, revenue goals of the business. So procurement, we realize that it is a very important process. Without this process, sometimes the company can go to a loss. So what does the procurement officer need to do? The procurement officer has a lot of ta tasks to perform has a lot of things to do by making sure that all the records are put, by making sure that they know in advance of the prices of the services or the goods that are to be purchased so that they can communicate to the administration and the finance section to get the funds in advance or even to pay back to suppliers who have already supplied services, who have supplied services or even the funds. So financial accounting. Uh, financial accounting, the, the procurement process can be divided and analyzed from several angles. So companies and industries will have different ways of managing the procurement of direct and indirect costs. And you remember, you can remember in our course outline that we are needed to know what is the difference between direct and indirect costs. So we are going to look at them in a deeper sense to know how we can differentiate between the direct and the indirect cost in the procurement process. So good goods companies as compared with services companies will also have different ways of managing the cost. So we have a uh, good companies, meaning the companies that supply the goods. Maybe like, for example, we are taking in some goods, we are purchasing a lot of excise books or our university is purchasing a lot of printing materials or even full scraps, or even pens, or even marker pens. Those are the goods that we are getting, and that's, uh, that, that we are getting supplied with. And there are companies that will be uh, supplying services, like now the internet services, like now the, the, the system like what we are using right now, it is a service company that pro pro provides the services. So it is very important to know this. So direct uh, versus indirect procurement costs. We are just going an overview of it, but uh, we are later in the in the unit, we are going to look at this cost in full so that we identify what are these direct costs and what are these indirect costs. So direct spend refers to anything related to cost of goods sold and production, including all items that are part of finished products. I repeat again, direct spend or costs refers to anything related to the cost of goods sold. That is anything that is related to the cost of goods sold and production, including all the items that are part of the finished product. Products. So for manufacturing companies, this can range from raw materials to component, components and parts. For merchandising companies, this would include the cost at which merchandise is purchased from the wholesaler for sales. So for service-based companies, Direct cost will primarily be the hourly labor cost for employees performing the services. For example, a repair company. We have a company that does servicing of vehicles and repairing of vehicles. Uh, now, what will be the, the direct cost? The direct cost now will be the payment that will be given to these employees, to these mechanics, or to these people giving the services. So that is the direct cost. So procurement, uh, procurement of items pertaining to the cost of goods sold directly affect a company's gross profit. So by contract, contrast, indirect procurement involves the non-production related purchases, meaning the non-production related purchases. These are purchases that do not affect the output directly. Now, these are purchases a company uses to facilitate its operations. So indirect procurement can involve a broad range of purchases, including office supplies, marketing materials, advertising uh, campaigns, consulting services, and more. So companies will generally have different budgets that 
process and processes for managing direct costs as compared to indirect costs. So, uh, goods uh, versus services procurement accounting. So, procurement is part of the expense process for all types of companies, but goods and service companies account for revenues and costs directly. So, as such, accounting for uh, procured goods, we also differ from accounting for procured services. So companies focused on goods will need to deal with the procurement of those goods as inventory. Now, these companies place a lot of importance in, in this area on supply chain management. So uh, service-based companies provide services as their primary revenue generator, generator as they do not necessarily rely as heavily on a supply chain for inventory, although they may need to purchase goods for technology-based services. So in general, cost of sales for many service, service companies is based on the hourly labor cost of employees providing the service. So procurement is a direct expense. It is not a major factor. However, service-based companies will usually have higher relative indirect costs because they typically deal with their own procurements and indirect expenses through marketing. So we have special considerations. We have uh, competitive bidding. It's part of the most business deal involving multiple bidders. So the competitive bidding process for goods is usually more specific, simplified than for services. So procurement is also the term used for purchasing goods and services on behalf of the government, which has its own bidding processes and requirements. Competitive bidding for all types of goods generally involves proposals that detail the per unit price, comma, shipping and delivery terms. Competitive bidding for the procurement of services can be more complex since it can involve a multitude of things, including individuals, involved technology services, operational procurement, client servicing and training and service fees. So in case, in each case, the solicitor, which is now the company that is undertaking the procurement or buying goods of bids, chooses the supplier they want to work with. Now, based on both operational business aspects as well as the cost. So the solicitor is then responsible for the accounting for expenses depending on the goods or services agreed to. So that is uh, about uh, an introductory part. That is an introductory part on procurement, on what is needed. When we procure, we normally have direct cost and indirect cost. And this uh, procurement department is a department that normally affects, it is a department that normally affects the business directly or the companies or, or the business operations directly. So we are going to the next slide. And before we go to the next slide, I want people, I want to hear again what people are saying. I want to hear from you. Kasheru. Anthony. Yes. You've not spoken today. Uh, we have talked about procurement and we have said that procurement is a process. And this process, it is a process that is involved with buying and uh, buying of goods and services that are needed in the company. So uh, why do you think, do we, uh, is, uh, you as electrical engineering students, why do you need to learn about procurement? Why, why do you think is it important for you to learn? Uh, the the importance of procurement to us as engineers mm. is when you are given a contract by someone or somebody, mm -hmm. you should you should have an idea or to know where the the good the correct materials you mm -hmm. you should know where to to buy you the correct material for the task you have been given. Mm -hmm. Somebody else who can answer that again. Anthony has done a good trial. Humphrey. Yes. 
why do you think it's important for, for me to teach you this procurement topic and yet you are doing electrical engineering? Do you think it is of importance to you? Okay. Yes? It's, it's of an importance to us because we as electrical engineers, mm -hmm. we, we might have companies to deliver goods and services. So uh -huh. we, have, we have to be equipped with the knowledge of how to operate the companies mm -hmm. to some extent that we should we will be buying goods and services mm -hmm. and and the goods will be required to the entire economy good that is a very good response peter yes can we hear uh, from you uh, the, uh, it's important for us for, to learn about the procurement because uh, you can you can find a situation like you are you are working for an institution, for example, uh, ZTEC. So mm -hmm. if the you are an engineer there, you have been told uh, there are some things which are required. So you use uh, this process of procurement to purchase things that you need for you to maybe if it is to repair or to do wearing in the that institution. Good. Now, this one will be answered by Salad. Assume that you are given a, a contract uh, to do an installation of a, a two-bedroom house. So a two-bedroom house needs electrical wiring and installation. So uh, you have been told that you are the electrical contractor who is going to do the wiring in it. Now, uh, how are you going to use your procurement skills in performing the project? Hassan? Tell us how you use the procurement skills that we have gone through to know that how to manage the product, the project. Okay, I can use that uh, procurement procurement teaches about uh, how to to manage the raw material to be used in that three house three bedroom house and uh, the product we we use mm -hmm. like a socket, maybe like a socket, like a bulb, uh, cables, uh, and uh, and the labor cost. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, you are a contractor and you you you, you manage that house. Mm -hmm. to, to maybe you maybe you, you manage the people and they're working for you because you are a manager mm -hmm. now, now you can control the labor cost mm -hmm. uh, overhead cost mm -hmm. uh, material cost I think uh, Procurement teachers, something like that. Yes. Yes, Salad, that is a good yes. response. Now, uh, for example, uh, you've given, been given, you, you are now a contractor on site, and you have yes. been told that you are going to do an installation. It is good for you to have this procurement knowledge because in the first place, when you are a contractor, you will obviously be the, the provider of the cash that is needed. So what are you needed to do? You are needed to do a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of things. You will, be, uh, you will be buying materials. And sometimes, uh, you know, you will, you will have to employ a procurement, uh, somebody, a professional who has done procurement. So you will also manage this person. So some of these terms, you will understand. Akizema, you know these are direct costs. You should be in a position to know what this person means by these are direct costs. So it is good to have this basic knowledge. Even if you are a manager somewhere, even if you are doing your own product your, uh, procurement or your own things for your own business, you will know uh, what are the costs that you cannot do away with, uh, you, you cannot do without. Meaning, what are some of the basic things? Meaning, I can suppress this and buy it later, but the funds I have today, I have to buy this because it will keep the process running. So that is the reason why we need to understand the procurement costs. 
Now, I want us now to go through this slide. Now, mute your mics. Amezunguka unajua ilikuwa na huko nyuma ya daro sasa ni kuzunguka na zunguka kuche Sorry, I have had challenges again. I think the system has some problems today. But okay, let's proceed. So I wanted to take you through. I wanted to take you through this slide so that we can understand what is there. So uh, some of the, the, the requirements or some of the things that go on in our public procurement uh, or the stages in public procurement. So this is a, 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 a sample of uh, somebody or an overview of public procurement process of what goes on in the public procurement. As used in public procurement is the process of setting aside a certain percentage of a, or quota in government institutions for members of the society who could be disadvantaged or underprivileged, underprivileged in a certain way. So this is a good example of what some of the situations so reservation is governed by constitutional laws statutory laws under the local rules and regulations so reservation policies under the coast have a major objective of ensuring the level that is leveling playing field so the public procurement is normally put in place so that it can make sure that all members of the public enjoy what the government can offer you will realize that anytime a government uh, the, the government institutions either counties the national government even the public hospitals public universities public schools when they make any advertisement on a procurement process they normally put uh, a privilege or or, or the take advantage and uh, give uh, privilege to the these people who are normally less less advantaged like now, for example, you might get a, an advert that says that uh, at the youth and the people with disability and even the, the, the women are encouraged to apply. Meaning, when uh, sometimes they can even restrict an advert and say this one is only for the youth and this one is only for the people with, 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 uh, people with disability. So they normally do this so that they can bring the balancing. That is normally a law in Kenya, the, the regulation that allows procurement, uh, procurement in the government sector to be able to, be able to manage and level, and, and level up the citizens of the country. So the preference in reservation, we normally have, shall apply when soliciting tenders, that is from small enterprises, micro enterprises, disadvantaged group and citizen contractors. And that's where you realize that uh, uh, normally when there's a government procurement or things that has to be supplied by the government, to the government, they normally uh, say that anybody who is employed by the government or is employed by the Public Service Commission cannot participate in the procurement process or cannot even be, uh, uh, be given the contract of supplying a product. So these are some of the rules that are normally laid down and that normally come with the procurement processes. So now like local contractors or citizen contractors in joint with ventures can 
can be able to supply the goods. So in order of the targeting of the groups must be registered by the Ministry of Finance under the, the Regulation 6 and will enjoy the benefits for a period of five years, which is renewed once. So for the purpose of ensuring maximum participation of disadvantaged groups, small and micro enterprises in public procurement, the, the, the PE may, in, may unbundle, or the, the public pro procurement uh, uh, department may unbundle goods, works, and services in practicable quantities a uh, password for the section it's normally in the law and uh, and youths are encouraged and you 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 uh, being one of the people who lie in these groups we are normally encouraged and we are told that when you are you want to start this pub uh, the participating in the normally gives opportunities to the youth because they know the youth don't have this cash sometimes they even give funds they even give uh, funds through the Youth Empowerment Fund. They give uh, funds through even the WESO yeah. Fund for, for youths to be able to participate. So all, the, all these things are things that are put aside so that we can be able to know. So when we go through this uh, procurement topic uh, in, in your course, it is supposed to equip you and give you the knowledge of what is going on in the market, of how you can fit yourself in the market. Sometimes youth uh, graduate from school and say, you know, I don't have capital, I cannot start a business, I cannot, I'm not able to manage or to acquire a job. There are some, so many opportunities that the government has put in place, but it needs somebody to have this knowledge to be able to, to get what is there. So no tender securities shall be required then we have required to complete and and sign the tender securing forms uh, any bidder you, you who fails to add there to the terms of the tendering secure those are some of the rules or the guidelines uh that are there so recent changes i don't need to read that or, or should i read that for you guys further amendment of the procurement laws and regulations were done in uh, june 2013 and at least 30 percent of the he is procurement uh, spend for purpose of pro, uh, procuring goods, works, and services from micro and SMEs owned by youth, women, and people with disability. You will realize that uh, that nowadays what happens even from these uh, the government institutions when sometimes they even want uh, some uh, services like now the cleaning services they normally give opportunities to the youth. So youths need to open companies. So the moment you finish uh, university or even before you finish university, opening a company is just 10,000 shillings. That is a limited company. And you can be able to participate in some of these things. Then you should be factored in the budget, procurement plans, tender notices, contract award, and submit a quarterly reports to the PP, the public procurement or, or, or organizing association and then we have the enterprise owned by youth women and persons with disabilities shall have the those are all the guidelines that are put in public procurement i was just showing you what happens in the public procurement then has at least 70 percent membership of uh, youth women and persons with disability so for you to be able to get this this uh, procurement uh, tenders you should have companies that have at least 70 percent members of that organization having members to be youth or women or even people with a disability because the government realized that realized that these are the people who are vulnerable and they are normally disadvantaged in most cases they normally don't get even this procure the government jobs easily so prompt payments for perform for performed contracts shall not delay beyond 30 days and then where the delay is inevitable the APE shall make at least 30 percent 30 percent part payment and shall give a written explanation for the delay so those are some of the things that underlie there so the public procurement process so we are here at last so this is uh, the process so when, when we go through the public procurement process then we have already gone to the standard process that is normally allowed for any procurement process so the first thing is procurement is the process which creates manage, manages and fulfills contracts so it relates to provision of supplies uh, services engineering and construction works and hiring of anything like disposals, acquisition of or granting of any rights and concessions. Procurement is a succession of 
locally related actions. Procurement activities commence once the need is identified and end when the transaction is over. So that, those are some of the requirements that we need there. So we have a diagram there to show the process and the system. Now, like for example, we start with a need, a need at triggers in the procurement process, then the methods, pro, uh, uh, procedures, op uh, operational policy, and then we have the provision of work, services, and supplies concludes the procurement process. And then the principal activities that are related there is we establish what is to be procured. That is the first. Now, this is the, the, the steps of now doing the procurement process. Step number one is to establish what is to be procured. Sometimes you'll find yourself in, in, a, in a, a, a company that you, you are in an, a procurement panel. So you need to know the steps that you need to go through. And even you have your own even your own, your own company and you need to procure something. So you need to know all that you need to do. And then decide on procurement strategy. So after now getting uh, to know what you want to buy, so you need to ask yourself, uh, how am I going to buy it? So you get the strategies. Then solicit a tender, tender offers. So you go for tender offers and look for those uh, the, the, the correct ones, then evaluate tender offers, award contract, evaluate tender offers after people have already applied for the tenders, then award the contract, then administer contracts and confirm compliance with the requirements. So after you have already awarded tenders to the, to, to the groups or to, to a person who is to supply the goods or the services, then you are going ahead to administer, meaning you make sure that all is fulfilled and all that was expected is done. Types of uh, public procurement systems, we have number one, we have centralized approach. This is one of the types of the procurement system, centralized approach. Uh, here, the central tender, a board or, or similar organizations oversee the procurement, evaluate tenders and award contract. That is the, 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 that is the type, one of the types of the system. The other one is perspective approach. In the perspective, perspective approach, Legalization and uh, associated regulations detail procedures to be followed. So financial instructions, minimum requirements relating in expenditure and auditing are established. So framework approach. In framework approach, we have the legislation establishes high, high level requirements and levels it leaves it to institutions to provide the detail. So those are the types of approaches or the systems. Now the premise, now the procurement system must be developed around a set and uh, set and outcomes or objectives which reflect societal expectation. So the procurement system must be such that the risk of the following is managed. Corrupt uh, practices, fraudulent practices, fruitless and wasteful expenditure, irregular expenditure, overspending, then unauthorized expenditure and under expenditure. You can see it there. Hey, Gasheru, you're saying I'm too fast. Okay, I'm sorry. I hope I'll, I, I, I'll go through some of them before I finish. Okay, now the procurement cycle. So because Gasheru said that, I want us to post there so that I, we can discuss and hear if people really got what I was saying. And mute your mics again. Humphrey. Humphrey. Yes, madam. It seems I've been too fast. Did people understand anything on the process and the of, of procurement and what is needed? Yeah. Uh, can you say something? Okay. You started by reservation. Hmm. Whereby you say that it's it's governed by constitutional laws and regulations. Hmm. And then we went for that look at the public procurement process. Mm -hmm. This creates and manages, this creates, manages, and fulfills contracts. Mm -hmm. And 
and then we look at the component of procurement mm -hmm. by it being associated with the establish what is to be procured and and and, and evolution of tenders yes yeah. uh that is a good trial we have also talked about the procurement process can somebody remind me on what we talked about in the procurement process somebody who got something from there anybody who got something from the procurement process it's a very important process Painaina? Yes. Ulipata kitu hapo? Kondo nilianza kupotea hapo. Hapo ndio ulianza kupotea? Mm. Ni nani ya kupotea amsaidie? Salad? Yes, madam. Wewe pia ulipotea? Naona hapo after public procurement process. Mm. So what to your procurement process Let me zoom out so that we can uh, the principal activities associated with the procurement process. Is everybody seeing the screen? Yes, yes, we are seeing the screen. Yes. Good. I'm now reading that there are six basic steps. The first step is establish what is to be procured. That is the first step. And I said Establishing what is to procure to be procured is you don't just buy things because of buying. You have mm -hmm. to establish, and that is why we learned about the direct costs. Mute your mics. Yes, and that is why we we started by learning about the costs. We normally have costs associated with this procurement. We have direct costs and then direct costs. Direct costs are these costs that affect the the product. Uh, directly so if we cannot uh, establish what to be to be bought and we buy anything without any order then we'll realize that we might even uh, we, we might buy what we don't need and when we we need these important things we might even not get that the finance that is needed for this procurement okay and then the next step is it decide uh, we decide on procurement strategies there are different strategies that are supposed to be uh, used or there's different strategies that are put in place so when we are doing this procurement we have to decide what are these strategies uh, strategies that we want to put in place so that is now uh, which one uh, we have to choose which one and uh, 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 the next slide was looking at the systems which kind of strategy do we want to use then solicit tender offers we, we try to put the tender offers by now advertising the tenders. And we, we had talked about the tendering process in estimation and tendering. We create a tender we, it's, uh, through all these processes. We advertise it and give it to the public. So that is now there soliciting the tender offers. And then after that, we evaluate the tender offers. After now, people have, uh, people have already tried to apply. We evaluate what has come in and we get the, the right person to give the tender. And after getting the right person, the next step in procurement is awarding the contract. In awarding the contract, meaning we give it to a certain person so that to be able to do that contract. And then the next, the next thing is, the next thing is administer contracts and confirm compliance with the requirements. Now, after you've already awarded the the, the contract, you are almost almost in the final step. Now, if I would, have I awarded somebody the contract of giving me services, of cleaning services, I have given it to somebody. So the only thing I'll wait for is to wait for the feedback. I want to see if actually this person is doing the right thing. Is this person doing the tender? Is this person performing the tender? Or is this person supplying me the goods that I want? So that is the process. These are very important steps in the process. And you should always they should always be at your fingertips because they normally come to the exams. And then we talked about the systems. Now, uh, you remember in the in step two, 
In step two is uh, looking at the strategies. Which, what are the strategies I'm going to use? Now, these are the strategies. You can choose any of them. We have the centralized approach, the, the uh, prescriptive approach, the financial uh, inst instructions, and the framework. In financial instruction, we, we said it is the, we, we look at the minimum requirements relating the expenditure and auditing are established. And then the premise, uh, the, the premise now, here yeah, we were at this point where now the public procurement system must be developed around a set of the end outcomes and objectives which reflect the societal expectations. So the procurement system must be such that the risk of the following is managed, meaning we have to manage the risk of corrupt practices. Like we, 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 we realize from what we normally hear in the news, Whatever is affecting the corruption that we have in the country, it all comes from procurement. All the sections affected in companies that can can uh, coincide or, or or agree with the financial guys, and uh, after agreeing with the financial guys. They might even tell this financial guy that uh, I want to procure uh, my right even. Uh, we have already bought uh, 500 uh, packets or boxes of, of milk for, for, for tea. But uh, in the real sense, what is received is uh, 200 packets. So the 300 packets written there, will just the cash will just be shared among the, the, the two guys, yet the things will not be procured. So there are normally a lot of uh, uh, corruption practices, fraudness, uh, fraudness that takes place in the procurement. So we have also fruitless and wasteful expenditure. And that is what we said about now looking at the cost. What are some of these costs that are not very important in the process? Uh, and this one will take us back to the quality control and inspection of the process. Uh, we will look at what is not important and do away with it and make sure that we are using or we are utilizing our funds on very important things. And we also have irregular expenditure. We have, it has also to be put in control that irregular expenditure is not very healthy for an organization. So expenditure should be done uh, according to the demand. So maybe in a strategy should be put uh, in place so that a specific uh, expenditures and uh, regular times and unspecific times are put for expenditures and when uh, the finance is available. So there is also, uh, it should also affect overspending. Overspending is also another thing that can affect the organization. Another thing is unauthorized expenditure. So unauthorized expenditure meaning that there's some, something normally co in, in organizations called petty cash. So there's normally a, a, a tendency to do an uh, over expenditure or unauthorized expenditure. Sometimes uh, things that are, are not documented down, you say this is a small thing, like now I'm buying, maybe I'm paying for the bills and I don't document down. These are called the unauthorized expenditure, which can affect the procurement process. And another one is the under expenditure. Now, uh, spending, uh, uh, trying to minimize the funds so that you spend a lot. Sometimes you can constrain the procurement process, and it can, it can not be successful. So the procurement cycle is there. Uh huh. So, uh, before we go to the procurement cycle. Before we go to the procurement cycle, I want again to uh, I want us to enter into a discussion again. I now want to hear what people are telling me about the procurement process. Remember, I repeated on the procurement process, and you see now we have said that there are some of the things that need to be managed during the procurement process. So, can people respond to at least what we can get? What have we gotten about the process of procurement? How what what, what is this that makes this procurement as a whole? very delicate uh, department or uh, part in the in any organizational activities can i hear from you guys and mute your mic so that we can at least hear from you somebody to talk without pointing to somebody yes madam yes Okay, procurement process, uh, 
first you should establish what is to be prosecuted. Hassan, <laughs> it is procured. <laughs> yeah. Hassan. Yeah. Ama ni network ndio mbaya. Eh eh ni message to you second is a decided on procurement strategy mm -hmm. you decide on the strategy meaning what is the strategy that we are going to use and i've already given you the strategies uh -huh. okay, another one uh, solicity tender offers mm -hmm. What what does it mean by soliciting tender offers? Ambia mtu akusaidie kama umelemewa. Choose somebody. Choose anybody there. And the end there. Ende kama umechaguliwa na ame mute. Chagua mwingine. Gacheru. The lazy tender offer. Mm. This is where where a person an attempt to come to occupy your task. Mm -hmm. you your you task. Are you sure? An attender tendering, giving the tender offers, meaning you want to advertise. Sindio, yes. it is the whole process that you are uh, you, you want to get. Yeah, you want to get the right person who can supply the goods or the services that you need. Yes. Uh huh. Evaluation of the tender offer. Mm -hmm. The next is our awarding of contract. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Na administer contract and confirm mm -hmm. okay let us proceed watch out to end there because i'm seeing our time is going uh -huh. let us mute our mics again so that we proceed and finish now we are on the procurement cycle in the procurement cycle, what are we supposed to do? We identify, it is an identification of the need. Now we are already, it's, uh, it's also part of the procurement process. We identify the need and then plan the scope, timing, fund and resources. Because a procurement process is something that is normally, recy normally recycles, it goes in a circle. It is something that normally recurs. So we have to have a cycle and a, a, a work plan of how it is normally done. Then we select the procurement method that is bid, uh, bidding process takes place, evaluation and award. It is all, uh, more over the same as the, the procurement process and monitoring the compliance of the performance and disposal of weight or waste or redundant materials. Sometimes some of the materials have been uh, supplied and we have not even used them. They have taken a lot of time before they are used. So there is a uh, waste disposal, sometimes which happens in auctioning uh, t uh, or, or selling them out even to staff members. That is what happens. Then identification of a need. How do we identify the need of a, a, a product? The scope of scale, that is the quantity, the quality, the timing, the delivery, and the budget. Then we have the technical specifications. Now we have to uh, the equipment that we need or the materials that we need the performance specification, that is the function or criteria, and then the testing and checking, that is now identifying the need of a good. Then we are also national or international standards. We also look at the quality, the performance. We look at the quality, performance, and the testing. And then procurement planning uh, is there. We have the annual plan. We have the policy and strategy, uh, profile and timescale, budget and resources. These are just explanation of the cycle. 
what happens in the cycle? The planning, we have the annual planning or specific planning. It's normally done depending on the type of, of product needed or the service needed and when it was needed. There's some services that are normally bought once depending on their specific need. And there are some services that are normally regularly bought. So we, are, we need to plan on this, this specific. And then pre-qualification, now that is the database of contractors. We look for the contractors that are in the database, the expression of interest. We also look at those who have, who have expressed their interest of needing to get the supply of these materials. Then we have open invitation for bids, restricted invitation for bids and negotiated procedure. And then we have the design contest and then restricted invitation. Although all of those are used to be able to get the pre-qualified staff. And then we have the bidding process. Now that is the bidding document. We know the advertising is done. Invitation to the bid. We have the format of bid, bid clarification. Now that is making it clear when the bidders have already come. Then bid submission, then procurement committee gets in and then we have the public opening. Public opening normally happens when the time frame for bidding has ended or elapsed. Then evaluation and award of contract. Under evaluation, we have the evaluation criteria, responsiveness of explanation of what happens in the tendering process. So up to that point, uh, we, have, uh, we have touched mostly on what happens in the tendering process. We have the contract award is there, contract management is there. Okay, there is a question that has been posted there. Uh, what is the meaning of bidding process? I think I had talked about that. Bidding process is the process of advertising a tender. It is like advertising a tender or making the tender known to the public. That is the, the bidding process. That is how, what are the steps involved or what are some of these things that are involved in the bidding process? Like now, the bidding document. Bidding is making known or making your, your need or whatever you want to buy or the, the, the service you want to get, making it known to the public or the person who is going to supply. So this process is now, it involves documents. Now like the bidding document, now which is, which is the tender document, the advertisement, you do the advertisement, sometimes they post the advertisement on, uh, on, on newspapers, they, they post advertisement on even uh, televisions and any other uh, media or news uh, uh, channel or medium so that people can know that uh, a certain product or a certain service is needed at a certain place. So that is the bidding process, making it known to the public that a service is needed by a certain organization. And then we have the format of bid is there. We have the bid clarification is there. We have the bid submission, procurement committee. All these are the things that involve the bidding. They are the things that involve the bidding process. Hope that one is clear. Now we have the contract. The con Contract as a bidding process has already done, meaning you have evaluated. Now we are evaluating. We want to know. We evaluate the, the evaluation criteria, that is responsiveness of the bid. We want to know who are these people who responded, who responded to the bid, who, who have given the tenders, who, are, who, who have uh, responded to the offer. Now we have the technical evaluation where we look at the requirements. If these people uh, meet the standards, maybe they, they have experience, they have the qualifications that we need. The financial evaluation, what are the people quoting? Who is quoting the highest? Who is quoting the lowest? And what is this person offering? So that is now the financial evaluation. Now we have the comparison of bids. Now when all other people have bid, bid is another name of a tender. It is just another name that is used in procurement for tendering. For, con for con contracts, we normally use tenders, but a bid is, is a, a common term that is used for procurement guys. So that is why you can see the name bid repeating itself now and again. So comparison of the bids is done, meaning the people have responded to your offer of the bids. Now you want to, 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 to compare who, who is the best, who, which person give, is giving what we need or what we expect. And then there's post-qualification of the bidder. Now uh, uh, one person is selected to be the person who has met what we need or the characteristics of what we need, and this person is put aside. So contract award. Once uh, the, 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 the committee has realized that this person has already been 
pre-qualified, then it is it, the person is awarded the contract. A recommendation is done and the authorities sign and then they, not, they notify the successful bidder. Meaning after the signing, uh, the, the successful bidder is notified and told that you won, so come and uh, let us make the, the, the agreements. So we, we, we give the terms and conditions, the budget, the managing, uh, how it will be managed, what are the risks, what are the do's, and what are the don'ts that are needed. So all these things are put in place so that uh, the contract can finally take place well. So we have now the contract management. After it has been awarded, we are managing the contract. That is, we have the contract manager who will be there to oversee the contract. Uh, like, for example, if it is in procurement, a procurement officer can be the contract manager. We have the risk management of if the products are supplied when they are damaged, there has to be a risk management. What will happen? Who will cater for the cost? Is it the supplier or the person receiving? What if we, we get uh, products that uh, we don't order? What are we going to do? So all those are about risk management. Managing relationships, also the rules have to be set, put in place so that all the parties understand what will uh, follow them if they don't do as required. And then we have the financial and budget, budget management. Now this is the, 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 the part of giving out money. When, uh, when a product is to be bought or uh, the, the two parties have agreed now that we are going to supply these things for me, so a budget is put in place and uh, uh, you are told or the supplier is told that will be paid after these intervals because of the budget and because if this is the time you'll be getting the funds. So it is normally controlled. And then we have the contract review. And then now the management process is, is, is there. You can see it now. We have the, the, the way it was, the man, contract management. We have the contract review, financial and bu budget management, then the managing relationships then the risk management you can see that that uh, flow chart then monitoring process now the monitoring process is the final process this is now where we have to see if it, there is compliance compliance is uh, uh, doing what you agreed to do if you agreed that you will be supplying me two, two boxes of milk every wednesday now i'm monitoring if actually you are doing the way we agreed and also the process also involves if I will be paying the way I agreed to pay. So that is a compliance. Compliance is agreeing to do or doing what you had agreed to done. So it has a legal framework where we have to sign documents. Documents are signed and the authorities have to sign, uh, including the highest level of authority, because the people have to authorize the supply of the product, then the system and procedures. Then the performance, we have the benchmarks. We now know we now uh, we we do the benchmarking, and now the, the product that are, uh, that has already been supplied or the service that has already been supplied, we make sure that uh, in the benchmarking we now people go to the ground. Uh, that is now the institution that is getting or is utilizing the what was supplied to know if actually whatever was supplied is meeting the needs or it has value for the money that was was being paid and also if it achieves the objectives. If, if it was supplying printing papers or marker pens, are these marker pens really serving the purpose that they were supposed? Or they are faulty? Or is this serving the, is it serving the value of the money that was given? So disposal is the last uh, part, which is the identification of the obsolete or uh, obsolescent materials, and then valuation of the stock, authorization system, and then method of disposal, and then revenue and write-off. Sometimes some of these things are supplied and they even uh, uh, take uh, reach a point where they're, they're not going to be used again because they, maybe there was an oversupply or maybe some miscalculations in the process. So in the disposal, so uh, what happens is in the disposal of these substances, what happens is uh, they, they are being uh, released to the environment. They can either be released by buying or even some, sometimes awarding people. Uh -huh. So we have areas of potential weaknesses. Those ones I leave you guys to read. Strategic procurement model. This one you'll also. What is procurement? We have already said that. Uh -huh. Public procurement. So you can see that this is a very important document for you guys. So yeah, you uh, I've already posted it in your notes. Procurement objectives. Why do we need procurement? Is to enhance pro professionalism so that we may, we may do things according to profession. Competitiveness, 
the value of money so that uh, you make sure that the value of money is done. Fairness is also done. It, uh, it is done openly so that uh, fairness can be put in place. We have ethical approach and accountability and effectiveness and efficiency. The professionalism is explained there and transparency is there. So all these things are very important for you. How uh, do we re achieve value of money? That is that's the value of money for money is a critical measure of the effectiveness of procurement process and outputs. So achieving the value for money requires a strategic and integrated approach to the procurement. Accountability is there also. Competitiveness and fairness. Those, these are the, the, the objectives that are being explained. What is the ethical approach? So all these things, you're going to go through them. Um, want us to, to reach certain things that I want us to look at. So that is the end of the slide. And uh, the next thing that we are going to do is costing. Uh, we realize that uh, under that topic, we have the direct costing, indirect costing, the procurement, the meaning, the and what, and then the job costing. The, the 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 job costing we we majorly we had discussed it in in uh, contracts when we were talking about contract planning I even gave you the notes contract planning we have direct cost we have material cost all those things were touched there but we will also repeat it and redo it when we get to there we also have down there the the tendering of process and uh, I also gave you the notes make sure that all these notes that I give you are very important and you should go through them. So up to that point, I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear questions. I want to hear comments. I want to, to assess if people really got something on this procurement topic before we can end the lesson. Any questions? So you unmute your mic so that we have a small discussion before we can break. Can we start with Mtinda? Mm -hmm. I have no question. Are you comfortable with the, what we have gone through this afternoon? Yes. yes. Oh, so if you don't have a question, give a comment then. Thank you. Uh, I'll give a comment about what we have learned today. Or... Yes, yes, what we have learned today. How do you find it? Is it difficult? Did you enjoy it? Did you understand something or there's something that you didn't understand? Uh, no, the lesson was fine. Uh, mm -hmm. I, got, I got almost everything that you have taught today. Oh, that is enjoyable. good. It is enjoyable. That is from Peter. Another person to talk. Humphrey. Yes. Say something. Hey, me, I have enjoyed the lesson. It has really enlightened me to start like yeah. something like a company yeah. Um, yeah and you've realized that you can even start a company even before you finish school yeah and by the way do you even know that these people who even own companies like for the cleaners and even for supplying things like tissues water to institutions they're just youths yeah most of them are youth most of them are youths and you guys you should uh sometimes some people even uh, use these uh opportunities to even get funds to educate them, themselves so we can we, we you can even ask for maybe uh people to assist you maybe with funds to start with a company starting a company is very easy the first step i think we will go through them let me not talk about it today it is the last topic in workshop organization Starting a company just needs a few requirements. So we are going to go through all those stages. And by the end of this uh, unit, we'll be able to know how to start a company and how to make our own money. So good, Humphrey. So anybody else? Uh, Gasheru? Yes. Can you say something? Give a comment on the lesson today, what you've gotten. Uh, how was it hard? And uh, you had already commented that I was fast. I reduced the speed, I guess. So say something. In today's lesson, mm. I can say it, 
it was easy mm -hmm. because I have understand I have understand many things. Mm -hmm. and the benefits of inspection. What is I have understand what is procurement. Mm -hmm. The steps to be followed when doing procurement. Mm -hmm. And the the types of proc procurement system and when you're good. having good. So today you enjoyed the class. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I continue encouraging you guys uh, when uh, we are on with the class and you realize there's something that you want to communicate, just write a public chat. I will see it there and I'll respond immediately. So Gacheru, good for, for, for doing that and you communicated and I lowered my speed. I hope I lowered my speed. I'm about to get the speed. But I hope you guys are explaining these things and you are getting them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Salah, do you say something so that we finish? Okay, the session is very enjoyable. But did you come my story? Ni kama tumefikia ama hatujafikia but Sio some tusikie. Eh. The the cost of direct materials at NATO Engineers Limited has become mm. too high. Explain three measures that the management may take to minimize this cost. Mm -hmm. Three measures of minimizing the cost. I'm going yeah. to deal with the, the cost calculations in the beginning of the next lesson, but at least you can answer something. You can have a clue. Kutoka kwa Kenya, tumesoma leo. Si mtu uneza kuwa na clue. Though we have not done the calculations of the cost and the things that we can do to reduce the cost. Somebody can, you can have an idea. What can you do if the cost of production, you say the cost of production. The cost of direct materials. The, the cost of direct materials. So those people are asking like, the direct costs have gone too high, isn't it? Yes. So what can the person do to minimize the cost? And you remember we talked about the direct costs. Sindio, yes, Tukasema, yes. direct costs, these are the costs that are normally associated with the direct producing of the process. Like for example, pesa yenye natumika ku brand, see, iyo in affect the product directly. Yeah. The workers yeah. that are maybe doing a service. So if if the cost has gone too high, though unajua sasa hiyo ni application question. Ni wewe unajiuliza kutokana na kitu tulisoma na mwalimu. What can I do? You now think. Unakumbuka tu unajiambia mwalimu alisema direct cost ina inatokana na vitu zenye zina zina affect product directly. Na indirect cost ni vitu kama now for example an institution like now Zitech University. What are the indirect costs that are normally there? Things like now to say watu kama wenye wanakuwa cleaners. See those are indirect costs. Yes. Now things like uh, the, like maybe the the, the receptionists and so many. Those are now in the indirect costs. Those are the, the costs that do not affect directly. Munaona? Yes. But now somebody people like the lecturers, they are also a cost, isn't it? But they are called direct costs. They are direct because they affect the output directly. Sindio? Yes. So ukikuja upate kama direct cost imeraise sana, inamanisha the output in eco affected. Maybe the quality sio mzuri, so market sio mzuri. So whatever that can make the direct cost kukua high, so that one and high is because the output, maybe what the product you are pro, you are producing is not get, reaching the market well, or the process is slow. So what can you do? You can even minimize the amount the, the, the amount of work, uh, workers, senior, or the staff. You reduce. but you cannot you cannot do away with the direct cost, but you can reduce, isn't it? Yes, to reduce the direct expense. Yes, do reduce the direct expense. How can you reduce the direct expense? Like for example, kama uwa unafanya tuseme una transport wanafunzi kutoka kwao kuja shule. Na na sa hiyo unaweza ukawacha uambie mkuu mnakuja peke yenu. Are you seeing such a case? Yes. Yes, so those are some of the things that can be done to make sure that you lower the direct costs. Is that okay? Yes. Yes, so lingine tena. Ok, 
Hakuna maswali? Are people okay? Yeah. For me, I'm okay. Okay, Sherry is okay. I'm free is okay. Peter is okay. Salad, are you okay? Yes, yes. Can we end the lesson? I'm a bad one. Nataka to end Yeah, we end there. Uh, we can end it there. So I'm ending the lesson, and I'm wishing you a nice weekend, and you keep yourself safe so that we meet again next week. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye.